So we got a two part question we're gonna answer here. Is it bad to copy or emulate other people's work when you're learning how to design? And how do you get better at something when you feel like there's no progress happening? Another delightfully rainy day in Minneapolis. Let's fix my hair, had a hood on, doing some stuff. I don't know, how's that look? Probably not great, whatever. Oh, it's terrible. I need a hat. All right, um, we have a question here, a comment from Mahmoud. I love this video and all of your videos. They provide so much value. Mahmoud, thank you. I would like to ask a question. I'm really bad at logo design and typography. We're gonna come back to that. Uh, so I signed up, so let's back up a minute here. This is a comment that is on the video, the time I should look up um, about having a daily practice and how that changes your work and approaches to having a daily practice. Cause I'm not a big fan of these create a day projects where all you do is technically get better at something over the course of it, but you don't fundamentally change. So that's where this is coming from. So I signed up for a Skillshare and right now I'm watching Aaron Draplin logo design course. Do you think that watching courses and learning from other people is bad because you end up emulating their style? I practice because I want to get better, not because I want to share something online. Also, I'm taking the typography course where you do 10 layouts every week with different parameters for each week. But the thing is, I feel like I'm not getting better and I'm not producing interesting layouts. Sorry if this is too long, but I'd like to know your insight. First off, Mahmoud, thank you for the comment and for the questions. Man, we got a lot of rain. We'll see how this goes. So, first things first. Hold on, I should stop screwing around. First things first, there's this question. You, you say you're bad at logo design and typography. And I think the question is, are you bad at them or are you a beginner at them? Because if you're a beginner, you're supposed to be bad. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing, if you're actually bad, are these things that you love to do or things that you think you're supposed to be doing? Because if you're bad and you love doing them, then you just want to keep going. But if you're bad and you think you're supposed to be doing them, I would take that as a sign that maybe you don't need to be spending your time doing this stuff. It's crazy because it's like dark gray over there, beautiful blue sky on this side, as we can see by the sun hitting me. But then we gotta drive through this parking garage. I wanna give a quick little background on my teaching philosophy. It's been in other videos, but if you, if you are alive, you probably haven't seen those videos. I think if you have a short-term need to do something, like you're at work and you have to design a logo this week, you're gonna wanna do whatever hacks you can possibly do to figure that out. You're gonna wanna copy stuff, you're gonna wanna learn techniques, all of that. Like if you, work in the marketing department and suddenly you have to design a flyer, you're gonna to wanna to learn some rules of typography. It's the second day in a row, it's like just storming like this. Let's get that. But if you don't have a need like that, you don't have an immediate pressing need where there's real consequences, then my general teaching position is you wanna avoid the rules and anybody else's influence for as long as is humanly possible. And here's why. I'm assuming that if you're doing an activity like graphic design and you don't have an absolute pressing need to make something, then that you're doing it for joy or interest, just pure interest. If you're doing that, then I assume that there may be the chance for you to make a contribution, however small that contribution might be, and that the only way for you to do that is for you to be as much you as is humanly possible. So in my view, you wanna avoid rules 
textbooks and copying as much as you possibly can and you want to focus on making relentlessly constantly so what I think is really important is for a creative person to cultivate a practice first then add to that practice through the rules theory and influence that makes sense to them but not to replace that practice the general creative philosophy that I have or the philosophy that I have about a creative life is that all the people whose work I really admire either taught themselves and then built on it or they had to destroy almost everything they learned. Now to me, the idea of having to destroy everything seems like a waste of time. Why not just not learn it in the first place? So that's some background. So then the question of, you know, if you're gonna learn how to design logos from an Aaron Draplin Skillshare or design a poster from a Paula Share Skillshare, because I feel like that's a thing that exists. My argument is if you're passionate about graphic design, don't. If you have to get results in a very short period of time, then do. Otherwise, wait. Wait until you're stuck. Wait until you feel like you're not progressing. Wait until you feel like you've taught yourself everything that you can to teach yourself. Now, I would back that up and of course I'm gonna contradict it because that's what always happens. I gotta stop off at Starbucks first, as usual. So, I would kinda wanna avoid learning people's techniques for as long as possible. But on the flip side of that, I'm super interested in people's process and their processes and the, the way that they work for a variety of reasons. If they tell me a way to work that I wouldn't have thought of, that is really useful information to me. You know, I do these bed no diagrams and I wouldn't have done that if somebody hadn't told me about it. So it's, there's a ton of value in hearing about the ways that other people work. I'm just looking for all these bullets on how to do stuff. I don't necessarily want to do it just like they do it, right? And then there's another reason that I would want to do stuff like that. Some creative people are fearless. There's no filter between the thought in their mind that they should try something and the um, instinct to try it. And then other creative people are cautious and they need permission. I'm one of those people that's cautious and needs permission. And it's not like I intellectually sit around and I'm like, oh, I can't do that unless I get permission. But it is like, it doesn't occur to me that certain things are okay until I hear someone else say it. A big motivator for doing this vlog is to be one of those people that gives other people permission. Getting glimpses of permission and thought processes and perhaps like ideation techniques, that's the stuff where I think access to other designers or other creatives is really powerful. I want to add one more thought about influence and that is that it's impossible not to be influenced by other people, by other creatives. It's impossible not to subtly pick up on stuff or think I should try that or whatever it is. And that's partially why I think it's really important to avoid it. 
is that you're gonna do it anyway unconsciously. So it might be a good idea not to go super hard with it. Because no matter what, you're gonna try things. So as with anything, there's pros and cons. On the technical side, I'm just a firm believer in fumble for as long as possible and learn your own approaches and techniques to the tools. And then when you get that little bit of technical know-how, it'll make you better but also special. Never see this much traffic. That's part one. I hope that makes sense. I hope that it's a somewhat coherent position. It's the one that I abide by in all creative activities at this point. So now we're gonna take the second part of your question, Mahmoud, which is you're doing some kind of course in typography, you feel like you're not progressing, and your your layouts aren't very interesting. So in this typography class, you're doing 10 layouts a week, which I think seems pretty good, but I would wanna do like five a day. Here's what I'm gonna throw out there. If you feel like you're not progressing, uh, if you're laying out something complex, you wanna lay out something simpler. Uh, the beauty of working with simple stuff is there's less to handle and deal with and sort out and there's also less places to hide. Just the fewer elements that are there, the more you have to really explore to make them work. So here's a really simple one. Find a very simple piece of content that you can work with repeatedly. One of my favorite things, it's all over my Instagram, is to pick out one of the last songs I listened to that day so like today it would be regulator watts 48 donut queen would be the name of the song i would take the name of the band regulator watts the name of the song 48 donut queen i'd make like a square illustrator document and then i would design a record cover i wouldn't really design a record cover i just need content and a square is a nice format and it feels like a record cover i would take that stuff I would set a timer for 20 minutes and I would explore. Don't worry about having a concept, don't worry about having an idea, don't worry about having a plan. Just get that type in there, put every word in a different text box possibly, or at the very least have two different text boxes, like one for the artist and one for the song name. And then just start pushing and playing with that type. Make it your goal that in 20 minutes, you'll have at least two things that you've sort of finished. But what I would advocate for is that every time you do something and you think, ooh, that's cool, that you quickly finish it, whatever finishing it means, and then you make a new artboard or you duplicate that artboard and then you try something different. It's really not about how many layouts you make so much as how much stuff you try. Because it's in the trying, that's where you learn to be a designer and that's where you learn stuff. Every time you try something, you get like this little reference experience of what works, what doesn't work, what's interesting, what could be interesting. And it's, it's in all that trying. That's where all the possibility comes from. And it's simple. Like there's no place to hide. There's nothing to wrangle because you have two pieces of content, artist or, or song name. I mean, you could do this with anything. You could do it with the last video you watched. You know, Gary V, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the point is to find something that you can't overthink, that you don't have to do research on, so that you can just explore and work and just develop your own feel for typography. And that's it. If you do a project like that, 
uh, and you do it daily and make it small enough that you can do it daily that's ideal and I don't know that you can do it daily but assuming you can If you can do a project like that daily, say 15 to 20 minutes at a time, but ideally daily or very close to it, three or four times a week, within a month, you're gonna be a way better designer. Your handle on type is gonna be a lot different. The number of ideas banging it around in your head about how you can use type, all of that is gonna change. It's like sketching or learning how to draw. And the thing is that the really hard worked for designer layout, like the thing that you agonize over, that's a lot harder to learn from. You learn from it, but it's almost like that level of detail that it requires that's way more handy for someone who really knows what they're doing and has a feel for things. And in the beginning, what you want to do, or if you think that you suck, like you know, if you think that you're bad at it, what you want to do is do a ton of stuff. You basically want to, you know, move fast and break stuff, as they say. That trying lots of stuff and doing it in a way that's fairly pared down and limited that's gonna that will blow out your skill set that's an exercise that I go through phases where I do it daily um, I make sure to frequently get my students at least doing that as a warm-up every once in a while for class but if I wanted to help someone like legitimately on their own, learn how to do typography, that's the assignment. And I would just be like, do it daily. The beauty of it is that uh, you'll get bored and then you'll have to invent new stuff to try. And you'll just, you'll start using the fonts you're not supposed to use and all that stuff. And you'll start trying things that maybe you wouldn't normally try because that boredom kicks in. Boredom is so helpful uh, because boredom becomes this prompt to try other stuff. One thing I want to add is that like beyond typography, I think you can apply a similar logic to most things, the most things that you want to learn how to do. And the metaphor I have used for the last few years is that when you want to start a new practice or come back to one, that what you want to do is you want to develop an addiction to it. And the way that an addiction is going to work is you do it regularly, you do it in small bursts, you make it f more fun than normal life, and you do it without a goal. If you do that combination of things, a whole bunch of mechanisms kick in. You start to look forward to it. You start to gain little insights from that day-to-day -day doing of that activity. There's a thread that connects through time. Even if you do something for five minutes a day, on the fourth day, it's not the same as doing it for five minutes. It's now just an extension of what you were doing. And what will end up happening is that you will start to do that activity for longer and longer periods of time. And this is the philosophy that I use whenever I want to start doing something. I don't go out and get equipment. I don't take a class. Um, I'm, I think I've made videos talking about how I don't like learning on the job. I prefer to learn on my own and then apply it on the job. So I've done these typographic exercises. I've done daily drawing. I have done music projects this way. For a while, I used to just make a drawing in SketchUp every day. I sit down with a laptop. I knew a little bit of SketchUp, but not a lot. I would sit down, set a timer, and just draw in SketchUp. If I wanted to get serious about 
motion graphics, that's the way that I would do it. I would start just either playing with After Effects or I might get an even more stupid tool. Like I might, I might get an iPhone app that lets me do something resembling motion graphics and then I would use that for a predetermined amount of time because of the fact that as long as things are moving, then I am learning. And that's kind of how I approach it. And then what ends up happening is you always hit a point where you want to move up. So whether it's with the fact that this video that you're seeing is double the length of the edit because I'm going back and I'm redoing a lot of sentences and cutting stuff out. That's not a thing I used to do, but it's the thing that happens with the repetition. Like as you care about the thing more and more, you start to notice other stuff about it. And so it's like, you wanna be able to record in a way that's less rushed. You figure you can put the thing in the car, you put it in the car, you realize that the bumps affect it, so you start researching microphones. Or maybe you're at the point where you're like, you know what, I'm sick of the iPhone, or I need lenses. But you wanna graduate up. So it's like, there's nothing wrong with learning how to edit an iMovie. Because eventually you're gonna hit the thing where you're trying to do something and you're either gonna hack iMovie to make it work, which is one of those things that really benefits you when you start hacking stuff, or you're gonna be like, I guess I, guess I need to learn Final Cut or Premiere or whatever. So I think there's a, I think there's a huge upside to instead of being like, I'm gonna learn After Effects to be like, I'm gonna start an After Effects practice. And then if it's meant to be, I'll get addicted to After Effects. So that's kind of a rough overview of my creative learning philosophy, how I think about copying stuff. It's not terrible but it's not necessarily the best use of your time. It depends on where you're at and how to teach yourself how to do something.